Remember, remember the 5th of November. It's probably best for us not to go there. But this is a season for the Church of Remembrance. It's Remembrance Day, so it's fitting and right that we should start our prayer today at the War Memorial here in Bridlington. The poppy wreaths were laid on Remembrance Sunday. This memorial has been up for a hundred years and it's a very familiar sight in a very central part of the town. It's something that people see every day. But I wonder how often people actually take the time to look at it, to look upon the names that are written across here, the people who fell for their country serving in war. These young men who left families behind, who made the ultimate sacrifice from this town and wherever you watch this there will be names on war memorials of people who have done the same one of my favorite services this year was when we dedicated the standard of Bridlington's newly formed Submariners Association A uh, very special welcome to the uh, members of the Bridlington Submarine Association who are here to uh, witness the dedication of their, their standard, their flag. The rules are that unless the flag is uh, dedicated in church and it can't be used uh, ceremonially. So we are delighted that they've asked us to perform that uh, ceremony. And uh, hopefully you at home can at least uh, get a bit of a glimpse of them looking very fine and submarinerish. Uh, it's, uh, we're delighted to have uh, Councillor, Councillor Liam Dealtree, our mayor, who's uh, lurking at the back, but uh, he's, uh, he's got the chains on, so we know who he is. And uh, Mrs Dealtree, I'm guessing. <laughs> yes. Uh, and also Cliff Wilson is uh, one of our submarine veterans, and uh, he is going to be saying the, uh, the words of remembrance later on. He is a veteran of the Second World War. And, sir, I don't think there are very many of you left, so... Uh, it's a privilege to have you with us and uh, on behalf of all of us, thank you for you and your com comrades and all you did to serve your country. During the singing of the first hymn, the standards will process into church. We're going to sing the, uh, the Mariner's hymn, Eternal Father Strong to Save. So uh, do please stand. I'm afraid if you're in church, you only have to hum. But uh, at home, you may make as much noise as the neighbours will tolerate. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, we do dedicate and set apart this standard, that it may be a sign of our duty towards our Queen and country in the sight of God, and a symbol of the service the Submariners Association is called upon to render.
it's a really damp um, late October uh, morning. I'm just going to very quickly step out into the rain and very quickly step in again under the shelter. This is the foot of the cross here. Um, the, the, the cross is actually from the charred remains of the, the former church that stood here at Emmanuel, um, burned down about 25 years ago. Um, and they rescued some of the beams and have made this cross, which is a focal point for our prayer and for our memory and for our remembrance. Um, and I have got here with me, I've got Les, who is a member of our congregation. And Les, um, I want you tell us a little bit about your time in the forces. Well, I joined up in 1971 as an apprentice, 15 years old and I left in 92, uh, 21 years later, at the age of 36, a little bit older, a little bit wiser, um, but when I, when I was there I lost quite a few friends um, due to uh, the Falklands and Northern Ireland, which were the main things that were going on at the time. And so this uh, festival, this season of remembrance is obviously very poignant and important to you. Well, it, to most um, ex-soldiers, well, ex-forces, remembrance is uh, quite a poignant thing because we remember all our lost colle colleagues of far and near. Um, we celebrate, well, we, in a way we celebrate their life but remember what they've been through. And I know that you always find this moving and, and I think that's so powerful. Um, why do you think it's important that Christians uh, continue to remember in this way? Well, in a way, Christians should remember it because um, even after the, any battle, um, there was always a church service. Um, in, the arm, in, in the armed forces, it's called a drumhead service where you've got a uh, a three, three-sided square, an open square, and uh, it's called a drumhead service. And for the altar, they use the drums from the, the um, from the band. Uh, so that's where we do our remembrance out in the field. And uh, as we look to remembrance this year, one of your roles here at the church is you you play the uh, the, the bugle. Um, for the last post, and that's uh, something that you're hoping to do to do this year. Um, did you want to give it a go now? I'll have a go, yes. <laughs> You may remember that one of the submariners in our service before was doing the act of remembrance. Well, here he is. This is 94-year-old Cliff Wilson. They shall grow not old, as we that are left grow old. Age shall not weary them, nor the years condemn. At the going down of the sun, and in the morning, we will remember them. We will remember them. We remember those lost in battle. But in this season of remembrance, we also remember all those dear to us who we have loved and lost. And in this era of Covid that seems to be hanging on and on, there has been too much death. What I've noticed in my conversations as a priest is just how much death has lingered, preventing people from moving on. Only this week I have led a Thanksgiving service for my Auntie Julie who died in April 2020. It has taken us this long to finally say a fitting goodbye. 
and I've had countless conversations with many who are bereaved and whether they've lost a loved one recently or in the past this year seems for many to have brought that pain right back. I've done funerals of much loved people where only a handful of mourners could be present and it's heartbreaking and that's why we need to remember them before God and that's what the church does on the 2nd of November at our All Souls service of commemoration. You are worthy our Lord and God to receive glory and honour and power for you have created all things and by your will they have their being. You are worthy, O Lamb, for you were slain, and by your blood you ransomed for God saints from every tribe and language and nation. You have made them to be a kingdom and priests serving our God, and they will reign with you on earth. You'll have the name or the names in your head of those people that you love and I know I do as well. Perhaps you might put them in the comments for this video and be assured that they will be in my prayers too. And now I'm going to light our candle. Lord God, creator of all, you have made us creatures of this earth, but have also promised us a share in life eternal according to your promises. May all who have died in the peace of Christ come with your saints to the joys of your kingdom, where there will be neither sorrow nor pain but life everlasting. Amen. <laughs>